here we are, here we are. Here and now is the reason why we're here to speak with you all to tell you that this ongoing process is something that we are intimately involved with. And uh, we'd like to share the information of this uh, ongoing process, which is both, you know, like a war and revolution happening at the same time. It's like a world yes. revolution in solidarity with the uh, Palestinians of Gaza. And, uh, yes. you know, there's no mention made of, you know, the confrontations in the West Bank as well, you know, which are ongoing. And 273 have been killed since October the 7th. And uh, another 3,000 have been detained as hostages by the Zionist military in the West Bank alone. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, much bigger than it is portrayed. It is. Um, I thought, I thought, let me just start with some comments. I thought that Netanyahu's speech, or his, I saw him speaking at a press conference or some for forum today on a clip on Instagram. And he was bemoaning Syria and Iran for all their human rights violations. And he was <laughs> appalled that the ICC would be even considering investigating Israel. Blah, 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 blah. He's, it was such rhetorical, um, such use of language to deflect criticism. And it showed his guilt. It just showed his guilt straight through. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it's, and if anybody can find this clip on Instagram, look at it because you'll see the Netanyahu of what he is a liar, mm -hmm. a murderer, you know, a con artist. A, a manipulator of words and his soldiers carry out his deeds. It was a very telling statement that he made about how Israel would not stand for this. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, same goes for Blinken. You know, I, I came across an article I was just reading. Uh, let me see if I can uh, share it with, uh, with everyone. Yeah, share screen is right here. And where is it? Right here it is. Okay, first of all, you know, Hamas, you know, managed to hit a, <laughs> a nuclear missile base of Israel, you know, like, oh boy, you know, like. Pretty good, pretty good. You know, like, wow. That's pretty good. And they had an explosive head to this missile as well. You know, usually the mortars, you know, they don't have any explosives in them, you know, but somehow they've gotten explosives now, you know, and this one, you know, like right next to the missile a uh, launch pad and okay this article this is what's important okay us israel collusion on ethnic cleansing plan tucked away in the biden administration 100 billion budget request for military aid to the ukraine and israel was a little three billion dollar item which rashid khalidi describes in an op-ed as Migration and Refugee Assistance Funding for Potential Needs of Gazans Fleeing to Neighboring Countries for Displacement Across Borders, you know, with S, you know, added on there, you know, like far, far away, and for programming requirements outside of Gaza, outside of Gaza, for sure. You know, this is ethnic cleansing. This is 1947 all over again. And this is the United States here, you know, colluding in it, you know, planning it, you know. And this is planned much before, you know, October the 7th. And here it is, right here. Uh, yes, even the New York Times reported here, and there's a, you know, hyperlink that goes with that, that Israel was a, uh, was, uh, had a plan to expel hundreds of thousands of Gazans to six countries. It named the U.S. and the U.K. in particular, as well as Jordan and Egypt. The article declares all those consulted opposed the idea. Okay, so they haven't talked about it. But now Israel is going ahead with the plan anyway. And if they don't leave, you know, then they're going to bomb them. So that's the... Uh, key thing there oh you're on mute Steve. that's, there. that's okay. very important news for us to know about yeah. all all that the success of their of the missile strike 
uh, which shows me that they have a way of targeting, which I did not know. Mm. Um, and also the fact that many of these 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 activities of the Zionist imperialist state were have been planned. So this shows this shows the nature of Israel as a country. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, for all for all my Jewish brothers and sisters out here listening to this, we don't hate you because you're Jewish. No, mm. I don't hate you because you like Israel. Really, I, I really don't hate you at all. Okay, mm. but the state you identify with has planned. They have planned ethnic cleansing since the beginning. And you've got to stand up and say, this is this is, this cannot be done in in my name. Mm. Right now, mm. we need the people, we need the Jewish people, those who profess profess that faith, those who believe in Israel, to stand up and make these statements. Because if you stand up, you take away, you take away the, the foundation on which Israel claims to rest. Mm-hmm. Those, those of us who, and, and that's what makes some of the protests in the United States so powerful. We have Jewish voices for peace, young people who are Jewish who want peace. And they hate that. They can't stand to see the vision within their supposed base about base of support. This, this, these documents are critical to spread and talk about, not just the bombings, which is horrible. Not, I mean, not, uh, not just the, uh, the cutting off of the water, cutting off of the food, cutting off of the medicine, that's horrible. But they planned this for years, for decades. Yeah, that's what yeah. that's what these are is very important. Oh yeah. The Zionist, you know, movement, you know, plans, you know, in the long term, you know, like decades, even a hundred year plan type thing, you know. That's how it got started in eighteen ninety seven. But the Jewish Bund, you know, started in 1897 as well, you know, to oppose Zionism because they were just, you know, basically cowards who wanted to run away instead of, you know, stopping fascism. Right. Uh, and uh, I told this, you know, to one of the Zionists who was yelling at me, uh, a lady, just as she was getting into her car to drive away, you know, and she was denouncing me in some sort of, you know, insulting way. So I said, you know, that, you know, that uh, the Zionists have no claim, you know, to to uh, being, you know, uh, upholders of, you know, a Jewish security, you know, because of the ones who ran away in the first place. And so I called her coward, uh, cowards. Yeah, I called them cowards. I think I yelled the word, you know, on the video that I have. I have a live video feed, you know, continuously on Facebook when I go to the dem- to the demonstration, okay, to the vigil, good, you know, good. like all the time now, you know, good. for security. And because, you know, something always happens, you know, it's incredible, you know, just out of the blue, you know, like, things you know pop up you know that i miss if i don't have the video feed you know live so you know i'm doing that and in between you know things happening you know like i have this monologue in which i do it i did a whole analysis of how you know zionism got its way you know like i had three waves you know of um, jewish refugee inputs that it uh, utilized you know to build the state and I explained it all you know like and all three times you know was because of you know failures in program political program to deal with the presence of jewish nationality in each of the contexts in which they came from either you know russia or you know the uh, arab countries or before that europe you know so you know like europe should have taken care of you know the jewish refugees and given them a territory given us a territory you know around wetzlau in western germany you know where my parents were no way no no they just wanted to ship everybody you know, expelled from Europe, basically, you know, into the sea, pushed into the sea, off onto Palestine. That's basically what Europe did, you know, shoved, you know, all the Jewish refugees that they had caused in the first place onto the backs of the Palestinians. That's the way it happened. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a very good point. That, that, that is rarely talked about. That's rarely talked about. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a Jewish refugee point of view, you know, like a real, Yeah. But, you know, the reactions of people yesterday was very positive. You know, I got a, I was keeping a tally, you know, positives against negatives. I was, you know, up to seven to one, maybe eight to one, you know, uh, over a two, two hour period. But it was pretty quiet at the, uh, at the Jewish center there, you know, because of Friday, they close early. So, and today I'm not going down, you know, I'm going to rest up, you know, to start again tomorrow. But I'm going there every okay. day, you know, like... You know, like I calculated, you know, like 2,400 people see, you know, the sign that I made, you know, like driving by. And then, you know, I, I I can say, you know, a few words to every person going into the center. But their security has ordered them not to talk to me. <laughs> you know, like they all sort of walk by like, near, you know, mostly they walk by, you know, like as if, you know, they're not allowed to talk to me like robots. But uh, 
Nonetheless, they, you know, they can't stop them from hearing, except for one father who told his daughter as she was going to the center, you know, like, as, you know, as she was getting out, I said, you know, like, um, uh, Palestinian lives matter too, you know, not in our name. And so he said, don't talk to anybody. Don't listen to anybody, you know, but it was too late. So. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that, uh, that's, that's an interesting way of doing things, I guess. Huh. Yeah. Wow. So what's going to happen now? I mean, uh, it's difficult to keep up with all the news. You know, perhaps you've seen something that I haven't, you know, like Security well, Council you know, got defeated again by the U.S. You know, it's like, what's... Well, that to me, that's a very critical vote. Oh, yeah. Because now a lot of people were resting on that vote to cause is to call to create a ceasefire. So now that the United States has blocked a ceasefire, we now have to determine if, okay, let me, let me start over again. There was an, a meeting of the Arab states a few, a few weeks ago. I'm sure you heard about it. It was in Saudi Arabia. Everybody came. Iran, Iran, everybody was there. And they all delayed um, the oil embargo against Israel. They, they delayed talking about any kind of action against Israel because they want they 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 are pushing the agenda of the International Criminal Court and the United Nations. That's what that's that's what they were re relying on. So one of their pillars is now gone. The United Nations is not going to. The United States will consist until uh, unless there's some change in the Biden administration um, position on how it's going to re how it's going to support Israel. They're not going to support a ceasefire, period. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. So now those, those Arab states have to now decide what is next. Because I'm sure they have a step. They, they, if, because they are heads of state, they have plan A, plan B, plan C. They're, not, they're in, in no way in, 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 incompetent of, of strategic planning because they're heads of state. Okay, So I'm sure they have a plan B. What is a plan B? I don't know. A plan A did not work. Mm. And I, and to me, that should show the movement in this country and around the world that our protests are effective in creating public opinion, but right now they have not moved U.S. imperialism to change its policy, its practice and strategy toward Israel. So mm. this, I, 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 I think this is a test, a test of the waters. We we mm. have we have put our fingers in the water. We know that the water is still very hot and the U.S. is still putting in the boiling water inside the pot mm. because they because because they they refuse to, to vote for a ceasefire. I mean, Israel will be forced to stop with literally. I don't know if it means that they would go to war in Israel if they kept fighting. I don't know if, they, if that's what it would mean. The part of the United Nations would would authorize force against Israel. But it would seem to me if if if. The U.S. voted for a ceasefire, and Israel violated the, went against the, the UN the UN mandate. Something could be done in some way, sanctions, you know, whatever. Yeah. So now that's been taken away. The option, at least, is not uh, on the table. Not necessarily, you know, because there's a uh -huh. way, there's a detour around the U.S. veto in the Security Council. There's a clause that's okay. never been used, you know, in the UN Charter, which the U.S. insisted upon putting in the Charter. <laughs> because they want to get away to get around, you know, a USSR veto. So to get, the way to get around the veto at the UN is, you know, to go to the United Nations General Assembly and get an absolute two-thirds majority. That means two-thirds of, of all the votes, whether, you know, abstain, uh, op op opposed or whatever, you know. So it's like a okay. super majority, you know. And okay. if, uh, if that the super majority supports the resolution that was vetoed in the Security Council, then it passes. Then they can well, order sanctions... The Sanctions, mm -hmm. and they can even send in peacekeeping troops. Okay, so that's the next thing. I know that. Well, I know from my listening to other sources that the peacekeeping troops idea is is percolating, and the BRICS states want to send their peacekeeping troops, and South Africa wants to lead the peacekeeping troop delegation. Mm -hmm. So, if they if they now operate Plan B. With what you're saying as an option, that might happen. Yeah, it's possible. 
Uh, in fact, it's I just sent, I sent that recommendation to uh, my fourth, former uh, ambassador, uh, Dr. Abdul Abdullah, and suggested that that's what you know the PLO should be doing. Uh, I still have my diplomatic connections, and I used it to that effect. In fact, I just circulated the Fatah uh, statement that was just sent to me from uh, Ramallah, uh, and with Fatah calling for an international peace conference to decide on on um, uh, sanctions, uh, peacekeeping troops, and, uh, and negotiations, okay. and and everything. You know, like they're, okay. they're calling for an international peace conference to settle the matter. You know, with well, the Palestinians, I'm... not without the Palestinians. <laughs> well, I I. Okay, politically, I think that those who want to end this in the United States have to end the system in the United States. Yeah. That will take longer than the peace conference will take. Yeah. So as a short-term goal, I will support such a such an international conference. Why not? It couldn't hurt us at all. Yeah. It would help us tremendously. Yeah. Um, I think it will take more than the peace conference. Yeah. It's not soon enough, though, you know, like it would take, you know, like another month or two to organize an international peace conference, you know. <laughs> true. That's true. That's true. That That's the pro unless you, I mean, uh, even if you did it digitally, it would, would take some time to put it together. A, yeah. a conference done digitally would could probably be done quicker. Yeah, but I mean, time you know, like, just setting it up. Yeah, a conference is like, you know, like really difficult to prepare, you know, like I've been involved, you know, <clears throat> helping to organize conferences with Libya even, you know, in which, you know, it's a matter of, you know, who gets invited, you know, and, and if one person who gets right, invited, you right, know, right, will right, not tolerate right. the, you know, and whether or not, you know, there's going to be, you know, like these right-wing fascists being invited there as well, because they claim to support Gaddafi, you know, like <laughs> all sorts of things came up, this destroyed, you know, two conferences that I know of. Uh, it's, you know, very difficult right. to accomplish. But I I, I, I I do think that it's a matter of, of of you know existential you know it's an existential matter for the United Nations. If the United Nations can't do something about this genocide in Gaza, then forget it. The United Nations is good for nothing. Well, that's you know I think last week or a week or two ago I shared my thoughts about the same thing with you. If nothing can be done about this, then the architecture for world civilization is defunct yeah there can't be any nation any i mean i mean any nation that can do this to into it in, 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 internally or externally for the world to see and nothing is done yeah. that's not no then the whole like you said the whole architecture of world of governance Security, class relationships is defunct. Yeah, and yeah. that's and I last week talked about the governments that yeah. it, that nobody would go to war on Israel. Okay, that was a one sided view, but that's how I was seeing it then. Yeah. But you, I do was saying what you're saying: if United Nations as an organization built on establishing world peace and communication and governance, if they can't deal with it, you're right; it's defunct. Yeah. So I think I think I think what you're saying may just happen with yeah. the other vote coming down and the other action because they they have to be seen as someone who can do something and I and I think yeah. that's why Israel is a little bit scared now. Yeah. I think there's a little bit mm, something may happen here because this. Please watch the statement of of Netanyahu. He looks a little he looks a little uh, troubled by. Oh. On a parent ICC, he looks a little troubled. The way the way he talked, uh -huh. you, know, you like I see people who are scared and mm -hmm. they try to blow it off. You know, I'm like, you know, this is, we're gonna talk, we're gonna stand up. No, yeah. if this, like, I I, I I agree with you. Yeah, if this can't be dealt with, yeah, then we have to think about a whole new architecture for how we deal with things in the yeah. world, anywhere on on the planet. Yeah, this is be outright. Yeah, outright yeah. visualized you know, like, seen every uh, day this is total yeah. total failure you know like this is just what uh, you know like it was something like this you know that killed the league of nations you know in 1939 you know when the second world war yeah. broke out the holocaust happened that was it you know league of nations was you know good for nothing so you know like forget it right. you know, got to start all over right. again so so the question can be asked even again <clears throat> see, i see i i i want to say a lot i'm 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 gonna keep it short 
the great, the so-called great powers, the so-called not so great powers have to ask this. Excuse me, the not so great powers have to ask this question. If this, if this, if this continues, what to say about the UN? Because it can't, it can't, you can't be killing people and videotaping it every day and beating up people and knifing them and destroying their homes and destroying their apartments and cutting off water, food, uh, uh, everything to people, medicine. No. Yeah. Nobody would stand for it. You can't. Yeah. We. This is what. This is what's outraging the world. Yeah, yeah. Is that people? Are, is this going on with not with no stop? Yeah, yeah. And the first well, time they had a chance to stop the truce, they bombed an apartment building. Come on, man. Yeah, no, man. Yeah. It's no good. Yeah. Yeah, this, you know what I tell the people going into the Jewish center there, you know, like is that um, there's two wars happening, you know, like there's one war between Israel and Hamas, you know, but Hamas right. is underground, but on the surface, it's a right. war against the people, you know, the bigger right. war, right? the bigger bombs, right. you know, right. are uh, being dropped on the people, you know, and why, why is it so important, you know, for them to get rid of the, you know, uh, Palestinians from Gaza, <laughs> you know, like there's ideological reasons, you know, okay, you know, but why in particular Gaza? Well, what about the, you know, gas fields, you know, offshore, you know, underneath the Mediterranean Sea, that uh, is 1.3 trillion, you know, uh, metric uh, uh, cubic uh, cubic meters, you know, of gas, you know, worth, you know, $9 billion, I think the figures. Then there's the Ben Gurion Canal that they want, you know, to connect in the Mediterranean, you know, down to the Red Sea, you know, right through Gaza, you know, as a, an alternative, you know, competitor, you know, to the Suez Canal under the control of Egypt. You know, they want to kind of, you know, under control of the United States of America, of course. And so that's why this is happening, you know, and eventually, you know, people have to come to that realization because it doesn't make any sense otherwise. You know, it's not because they're necessarily evil. It's just they're bloody capitalists. That's what it's all about, imperialism, you know, and that's a determining factor that drives, you know, politics. That's what drives us to war. That's everything, you know, is money, the American dollar. That's number one. Nothing else counts. Not the lives of Palestinians and not even the lives, you know, like of uh, American workers. That's it. That's all. You oh. said it. You said it. That's it. Okay, good. Let's not get uh, too upset. We might do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. All right. Okay, okay, I'm back on, on the line there. Tomorrow I'll be back there at the Jewish Center, you know, picketing. Uh, and uh, I send out, you know, live video feeds on on uh, on Facebook, you know, at Abraham Weisfeld. So, you know, that's it, that's all. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Oh, good. It's always good to speak with you. Bye, Steve. Next week, here and now, until then. <laughs>